once students are accepted to RIT, then we're notified. We have a system that's linked with the admissions offices. And so we know who's coming, and those students uh, who are coming are invited to register for our orientation program. For that orientation program, we hire 25 peer advisor leaders, PALS. In fact, we're training a new group today, and they uh, help us over the summer, typically it's over the summer, answering questions from students, preparing um, updates of the handbook on what you'll need to know when you get here. Some people read that in advance, some people don't um, when they get here, but we, we help answer a lot of questions by email over the summer. So obviously the earlier people know they're accepted, the better, but in some cases, as you mentioned, um, with government scholarships or other things, students aren't accepted until a little late in the summer, but we'll help people by email right up to the time they're coming or by phone. And then when they arrive, we have a ride from the airport. We have an arrival day, we have PALS welcome students at the airport, we have buses that bring them to campus, and then we run a two to three day orientation program just for international students. It's grads, it's undergrads together, but it's trying to tackle the specific issues that are of interest to international students and are of concern. Uh, I think it was really long and an extremely tedious process because it takes us almost like six months to get here. It starts out with like giving I started by giving up, giving my GRE in November and then I started applying, writing SOPs, getting recommendation letters and uh, at some point in time I realized it was a lot of work because I was also working which is why I decided to hire a counsellor and she was the one who put together um, pretty much everything that's needed for the application and everything I need for my visa interview and sent it she, it was her who basically applied to all the colleges and I was the one who gave her the content and I think by Feb or something I, just, I heard back from RIT, UTD and a couple of other colleges. Uh, the application process started off by getting the approval for the scholarship. Um, first I needed to Given certain documents, um, my grades from my undergrad, for example. After that, um, once you pass that step, you have to take an, an, a test, an English test, the TOEFL. And if you acquire a certain grade, um, then you're past that, that uh, step. After that, they take probably a month or two to call you back. You don't hear nothing. You probably think you just lost it. <laughs> but when they do, they call you back with the nice news that you have like one day to bring in a bunch of documents you do not have and you have to dig out of the ground if possible or whatever. Luckily, I made it and all of the other Dominicans that are here did it also, so. So we decided to, or I decided to apply to it. And when we got, when I got my acceptance letter in the mail, I also found out that I had gotten a scholarship from RIT. So what I had to do was basically I didn't have to ask for an appointment because I was going on a student visa. So I just had to take myself to the embassy. And the second I was there, I had gotten my visa. He said I was accepted. He asked why did I want to go to RIT. And within three days, my passport had arrived to my dorm room saying that I got. because I'm a photo major and uh, RIT is one of the top schools for photography. The equipment they have here is amazing, the professors are amazing and it has a really, really good reputation for this major. Uh, at first I applied for five schools uh, for the masters. RIT got gave me the offer in the first place, the earliest, and also that I, that I got the package from RIT uh, contains a lot of information. The information of registered the information of the RIT school. It's 
instructions, very detailed instructions for uh, for foreign students to come here, and that made me feel very um, considering that the film. This is a very friendly school. Pakistan, uh, but generally in in that part of the world, our culture is very family oriented. You know, people we have a lot of gatherings. People get together many times a year, and even we, I am this old, but I was, I was still living with my family. So these are things that I don't see over here. Over here, it's 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 more of an individualistic kind of a culture where everybody is on their own. I mean, which is good in a way. It uh, gives you that independence and your uh, motivation to do things from the start. Cultural clashes. Uh, well, coming from Dominican Republic, you probably just see Dominicans in your undergrad or probably a few international students when you get here. Another big thing for me was um, the amount of hard of hearing students at RIT, deaf students. In DR, I did not see that much. I was not used to it at all. And it's, it's interesting. I guess RIT has a lot of support for hard of hearing students. And, and it's interesting. You learn how to interact with these people. Um, you learn some signing if you're into it. RIT even gives sign classes. That, that's really nice. And it helps out. It, it, it helps like to to join people that wouldn't normally interact. So um, I'm a research assistant here and uh, that was one of the most, thing, most things that I struggled with um, because of the communication with my advisor. Uh, like back home we don't have one-to-one -one relationships with our professors and here my advisor expects me to like inform him uh, constantly, ask him uh, about everything and here it was very weird for me like when I first heard undergrad students calling their professors with their first name <laughs> this is really awkward for me so one of the the good things about RIT is that we've got a uh, hundred different nationalities represented here currently that's almost 2,000 international students um, with that breadth of diversity there there always comes challenges right there's pros and cons um, and uh, it's just kind of thinking about it as an intersection, like a traffic intersection. Uh, people go through the same intersection, but there have to be some understandings of the rules. So you put up a stop sign, you put up red lights, and then people have to agree on what those mean. So. Obviously you're going to have people that will be like, oh you're a girl, I can't talk to you, or like there will be professors who you have to like watch the distance you're standing with, or you'll like go into their office, you have to keep their, your doors open just because they don't want people to speak around. Which is true, like we all have our differences, but at the end of the day you need to focus on more of the similarities that we have rather than the differences. Like we're all humans at the end of the day, we all eat, sleep, drink, we all want the same thing, we want... We want to live in harmony, we want to live in prosperity. And it's hard sometimes when you see, when you hear the difference, like the clashes, like for example, your friend having to drop that. And, and you're like, why can't you see it? Why can't you see that you're sitting in a study situation? No one's going to say anything bad about you. Just focus on what the, to get this thing done. And it, it never said in religion, like, you sit there, you sit that. At least that's what I've been taught at home. You're always going to be in that setting where you're going to be in a mixed setting, so learn how to adapt to it, learn how to like, talk to it, like be within it. So I, I think I adapted 
pretty well coming here because I, from my setting back home, that's what we were taught and how to accept people's differences. Everyone's going to have a difference. You have people that don't drink, you have people that eat kosher food, you have people that um, dress like don't show about the knee. So you have to like let those si things aside and like focus more as a person and just focus on the similarities rather than the differences and then you can learn to adapt and coexist. And that's how I've been doing it. And it's worked so far, so. <laughs> To the Mac, get up what it is, what it does, what it is, what it isn't. Looking for a better way to get up out of bed instead of getting on the internet and checking a new hit. Get up, first shot, come strut walking.